here's the most important car modeling tutorial that you've ever seen in your life, all right? And I'll even go as far as saying this is the most important organic modeling uh, trick that you've ever seen. I know some of you guys are going to be talking in the comments, Arya, this is not organic modeling, this is hard surface. In my book, this shit is organic modeling, all right? And I'm taking that to the grave with me. But at that, we're going to talk about it in another video, all right? Here's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to show you how you can easily create any kind of weird curved, bent, organic type of pattern like you see on, the, on a car or something like that, all right? If you can do this, modeling cars is going to be so much easier. I don't have to sit here and show you how I model cars. If you know this trick, you're going to just be able to do it yourself, all right? So pay attention. It's one tool which is probably the most important one when it comes to this type of shit. I'm going to show you how to properly use the grid fill tool. Now, some of you guys are probably already familiar with this, but let me show you how to really use it, what this can really do, all right? So the grid fill tool is when you have a frame and you want to fill it in with a nice consistent kind of pattern, which is like a grid, okay? So this is an example right here. We have a frame which has three edges over here and it's by four edges over here. So three by four kind of frame. And notice how it's a little bit curved, all right? And the grid fill tool is simply going to let you select this entire edge loop, go to face, grid fill, and fill it in with a grid. Now, so usually when you fill it in right off the bat, it's going to give you a twisted, a little fucked up result. This is not what you're trying to go for. You want to have a clean grid like this one, all right? So the way to do this correctly is to use this little menu down here, all right? If you don't have this menu, that's probably because you clicked somewhere else. So if you want to bring it back, you have to undo the action and then do it again one more time, all right? So here's how you control the grid and make sure it fills in correctly. You have to take either the number of edges that you have on the top side or the number of edges that you have on the right or left side. Now keep in mind, the opposite sides of this grid have to have the same number of edges. If this one has three edges, this one also has to have three edges. If this one has four edges, this one also has to have four edges, okay? That's very important. So now you have to take one of these sides. In this case, I'm gonna go with three edges or you can go with four edges. You're gonna put one of those numbers into the span setting right here. I'm gonna type in three because that's the number of edges I have on top. And once you do that, you have to adjust the offset to sort of twist this into place to make sure it fits correctly. And if you do this enough times, you're going to get a perfect, nice, clean, organized fill for your grid, all right? And this is very useful for creating curved surfaces like you have this one right here, okay? Again, we have a uh, frame, which is one, two, three, four. Four edges here and one, two, three, four, five, six edges on the side, all right? Also on this side, three, uh, three four, five, six, seven. No, this is the edge from below. So it's four by six, all right? Again, it's going to be the same thing and we're going to be able to create this nice curved kind of surface. Select everything, face, grid fill, and the span is four or you can put in six. Then you just have to adjust the twist, all right? And that's how you're going to perfectly fill this surface in. You can also take this a step further by creating some really fucked up shit, all right? So this is essentially a cross section of the shape we want to fill and we're going to end up with like a snail shell like this or something like that. This is the cross section, and we want to guide this all the way around this circle so it fills back on the other side. Notice how this, think about how this trick is gonna be useful, right? And it's very simple, it's, again, it's the same thing. Face, grid fill, we're gonna type in how many edges we have? One, two, three, four, five, six edges, or was it seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. And now we just have to adjust the offset. Now in this case, using seven as your span is never gonna give you the right result no matter how much you twist it. So instead, we're going to use the other side. Now this side has 13 vertices and we can count that very easily if you don't want to count them by hand. You can select an edge loop. You can go up here to this little menu, check statistics, and it's gonna give you the number of edges that you have selected as opposed to how many edges exist in the mesh which you're editing. So in this case, 13 out of the 40 edges are selected. Right here, we can see that. Which means that this side has 13 edges. Which means if we select this, we go to face, we go to grid fill, and we type in 13, this is filled for this side and we just have to adjust the offset to a number which is going to be, uh, be appropriate. In this case, an offset of seven gives us a perfect filling, all right? So how are you gonna use this when you're modeling cars? Well, let me show you, all right? Let's say you have your blueprint of your McLaren. You got your top view, you have your side view and have all this shit ready. And you're going to first create a cross section of one of the sides. So the easiest way to do it is like this. You add in any mesh, you go to edit mode, you press X, collapse edges and vertices, and now you're just left with one vertex, which you can extrude into anything you want. We're gonna model out a little cross section of this car. Maybe we're gonna model this little uh, pointy nose here, and then we're gonna bevel that to give us a nice little curve there, like this, all right? So this is just one cross section, which is currently in the middle. Now, if we go to top view, we're gonna have to place it somewhere in the middle because this is the cross section of the top view of the nose, right? This is a little slice from right here. 
And if you go to top view, probably if you're a beginner, you're going to do something like this. You're going to extrude it, rotate it, extrude it again, rotate it, extrude it again, rotate it, extrude it again, rotate it. And by the time you finish, you're going to notice this thing looks fucking atrocious. It's not even at all. It's not smooth, nothing. I'm going to show you a way easier and a way faster way to do this. And it's going to actually look good. It's going to give you the right, right result. Here's how you do it. All right. Since this is just one cross section, we're going to take it all the way to the side where this cross section begins. All right. Like this. This is where the cross section begins. This is one side. Then we're going to duplicate this little cross section. We're going to take it to the other side. And this is the other side of this little curve. Now we have to join the corners of this face. And now you can see this starts to look a lot more like the grid that we just filled a second ago, but we still need to make a curve like this. So add some loop cuts this way, take these two vertices and push them forward. And we're going to bring those into place. We're going to bevel them. So you're going to bevel them with control B and then you're going to press V so you can bevel just a single vertex, right? Like this. And now you get a nice little curve for the front of the car. And now we just have to fill this in the same way we just filled the grid a second ago. So you're going to select this. You're going to count the number of edges one, two, three, four, five, six, or maybe you want to know this one as well. This one up here is eight edges. All right. So you're going to select this face grid fill. And in this case, blender automatically recognizes how it's supposed to fill this. So you don't even have to do anything. Right. And now you have an easy, nice, beautiful, little organic filling for your car. All right. Object shade smooth. And you can continue from here doing the same shit for other parts of the car. Tell me this wasn't the coolest blender modeling trick you've seen all day. I know you spent all day watching YouTube videos. So tell me when was the last time you saw a better trick than this, all right? Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I'm going to see you guys in the next one.